I'm a senior at Shadow Ridge High School, and I suffer from anxiety and depression. Uh, my name is Isaiah Blake. I go to Shadow Ridge School, and I'm here to talk about health and wellness. My name is Marlena Guzman. I am a junior at Apple Valley High School, and I suffer of depression and anxiety. My name is Isaiah Nieves. I'm a sophomore at Apple Valley High School, and I suffer from social anxiety. My name is Sibali Cruz. I go to Shadow Ridge High School, and I suffer from anxiety. Hi, um, my name is Aurea Zambrano. I'm currently a junior. I go to Apple Valley High School, and I suffer from anxiety. So, our goals for mental health. We want to start off by increasing the amount of awareness that surrounds mental health because me and my team believe that our peers don't have the right understanding uh, on the very broad and overwhelming topic that is mental health. So, a uh, root problem we seek to fix is students don't have the right tools to help them in school with a ratio of about five to six, counsel five to six counselors for every few hundred students. It's virtually impossible for these sorts of systems uh, to help students gain the help they need for their personalized issues. Uh, so we plan to set up easily accessible support systems that any student can uh, use in their time of need uh, to fight their problems because we uh, think that mental illness does not have a schedule. One problem in our schools is the lack of recognizing these symptoms early and eradicating them. Since most of these teens and adults gain their illness early on in life, it creates sort of a snowball effect that will follow them down into adulthood and will affect salaries, work ethic, anything sort of like that. So why not catch these problems early and eradicating them at their source of origin? And the last thing we need to do is allow teens a safe place where they can express themselves freely and not face ridicule and judgment from peers and adults alike. So, increasing behavioral awareness. As a school, I feel like we're not providing the necessary spotlight uh, on our personalized issues at school but instead trying to attack these problems that are too vague and broad to do any good. Every school is different, with different students, different teachers, and different advisors. And everyone cannot have the same specific uh, outcome with the same specific problems. So I want to ask you all a question, actually. If one doctor gave all of his 100 patients the same medicine, what do you think would happen? The outcome would most likely be fatal. I believe this analogy applies for our school systems too. That every school is different, like I mentioned, every student is different, no one has the same problems. And we need to, we need to recognize and confront these specific and individual problems and make a basis on our solutions off of that. The big thing though is staying consistent and making sure that it's not turned into a one and done sort of scenario that many schools seem to use now. Where Schools talk about it for one week, and they forget about it till the next year they have to talk about it again. They feel like they just need to talk about it and get it over with. So we must stay consistent and strong on our beliefs and techniques if we want to have any change in our school system. And another thing, our schools need to be up to date with their tools and techniques in order to combat mental illness and types of problems in schools. This means more meetings and trainings with teachers to show them what to look for in students and how to recognize these specific symptoms and students and provide assistance all throughout their school instead of trying to use a one and done size fits all technique. And for my last piece is confidentiality. While I can agree, I most likely don't know the legality besides, or the legality in keeping problems confidential between students and advisors, I think it's still an important topic that we need to discuss because I think we can all agree that students, a lot of students don't go and record their problems to their peers and advisors because they're fearful of what they might think or say. They're fearful that they might be judged. So I think that we need to strengthen the bond between students and teachers, and that will most likely bring a change to what we're seeing in our day-to-day -day lives. Thank you. So uh, I think the behaviors that need to change, uh, one clear antagonist of people having mental health issues and uh, just confidence issues is bullying. Uh, bullying has always been a thing, and sometimes it's worse than others, and some people experience it more than others. But it antagonizes people to lock themselves on a negative mindset. So uh, locking yourself on a certain emotion, especially negativity, is what your life will revolve around. 
So if somebody becomes negative or are taught to be negative, that's what they end up doing. They don't have uh, options to grow. So a lot of people overstress, <laughs> just as if like I overstress right now. <laughs> just thinking about this. Um, loss of interest is the fact of not wanting to do something, not learn something from school. Or, uh, I'm here because I feel like I can make an impact. Like I feel like my voice actually matters right now. Currently I'm impacting people and that's my interest. Uh, delayed action is like everybody wants something better. And uh, we all aim for something better, but not a lot of people actually take that stance of making it happen now. Uh, kids need to be given resources, uh, counselors, uh, just being able to study for an extra 40 minutes during lunch can make a huge effect on if you get a C or a B in math, or if your parents yell at you when you get home because you're great. Um, and I think those are some of the biggest behaviors that need to change from everybody. Students also have to understand that they have changes to make themselves. It's not just we need to be given everything, we need to search for things. Because we have materials that we don't fully use, and uh, we're not really taught how to utilize things properly. So, while we have counselors that we can go to and teachers we can speak to, a lot of us have fears, and we don't know how to overcome them. So, just, I think these are some of the main actions that need to be taken, and it can be by everybody. Students, teachers, counselors, the district, and the scale of importance is uh, it's clearly up there. So one of the biggest things, especially that you hear nowadays in our generation, I hear it almost every day at school, is kids saying, oh my god, I'm so stressed, I'm going to kill myself. Or, you know what, as the shortened version, KMS. You see people posting it all the time online, and you see, you hear it all over our campus. But people don't really know what they're saying when they say, I'm going to kill myself. That means you are going to take your life away. That means that you are no longer going to be on this planet with your family and loved ones. That means you are removing yourself. So a big thing is people always seem to think they're depressed when they're actually just sad. So it's important to know the difference between depression and sadness. Um, depression lasts weeks, months, even years, whereas sadness, like, you can go with being sad for like a couple days, maybe a week max, and you're like, you know what, I need to get over it, and point blank, right? Depression also impacts your ability to function. You don't want to get up in the morning, don't want to get out of bed, don't want to eat, you don't see the point of it. Whereas sadness, it doesn't really affect your ability to function every day. You're just you. And you're like, you know what, well I have to keep pushing through it and I gotta keep rolling with the punches, right? Also, depression is seen as an illness. Sadness is not an illness. When people say they are depressed, that means they are medically diagnosed with depression. You can also think you have depression, which is another thing. But if you are not capable of getting out of bed in the morning, or because of something that's physically impacting you that you cannot function, then you may be depressed. But sadness, it does, it's not an illness. You can get over it. It just lasts a while. Um, depression is when one feels hopeless and helpless. It's not necessarily connected to an event or some certain thing that happened. You just don't feel like yourself. You don't know what's going on in your life. You're just torn to pieces emotionally. Whereas sadness, one feels sad about a sad event or a situation. It's one specific thing that's making them sad. And they can eventually get through it. But we need to also raise awareness on the fact that depression and killing yourself is not a joke. When you say, I'm depressed, or oh my gosh, I'm so depressed, you're not depressed. Because if you were depressed, you wouldn't be joking about it. Point blank. That's it. So if you do hear the word depression, or you hear someone say they're going to kill themselves, Ask the question, well, are you going to kill yourself? Are you thinking about killing yourself? Are you physically depressed? Are you mentally depressed? Don't let them get away with just saying, I'm depressed or I'm going to kill myself. So for my slide, I don't mean to dra I, like, drag along, but um, this topic means a lot to me, so just warning. Um, I have four topics here. First one, inconsistency. We're lacking change. 
And we're also not consistent with the fact that we need to give these people the help that they need to help them overcome that mountain, that hard mountain of what they're suffering with. And we're also not consistent with the problem itself. Because we feel as if sometimes you guys just throw it over your shoulders like it doesn't even matter or it's not important. And it may not seem that way, but to us it's just how we feel. I'm going to talk about not enough awareness and not enough resources together because they're basically the same. Not enough resources, people who suffer don't feel like they have the resource to help themselves or they're scared. Of course you can search online of what mental health is. And if I'm suffering from it, they take surveys or how to solve it yourself at home. Or even you go to a doctor or a therapist, but all they do is just give you medicine. We don't want to be medicated. We just need some love and support, that's it. Not enough awareness. I want to say something. You have anti-bullying awareness and you have anti-drug awareness, which both people who suffer from whatever mental health issue it is, they sometimes turn to drugs. They sometimes turn to bullying. Because how do we know the bully itself isn't a victim of depression or anxiety? And then finally, no trust. That big word, no trust. Students don't trust their teachers, their friends, their counselors, their peers. Some don't even trust their family. Me, um, I have my family here today. They love me so much and they do everything for me. I have two best friends who have great morals and they love and understand of what I have to say. I have a wonderful school with great teachers who love me and encourage me to do everything. And then there's just times where I don't trust my family at all. I don't trust my friends. I don't trust my teachers, my school. I will open up to my mom and I will cry because I feel embarrassed or weak. I am so blessed and for me to feel this way so sad. I suffer physically. I had to go to doctors. I had medical procedures done to me. I developed migraines, stomach ulcers because I have depression and anxiety. And they do it because they love me. But I wonder, for that one person out there who doesn't have a loving family to turn to, or a school or a teacher, or friends with bad morals that they can't go to to ask them for help because they'll just give them bad advice. If I'm feeling this way, and I'm so blessed, that one kid who is not, who is not blessed enough, I wonder how they feel because they must feel much worse than I do. Again, there's no trust at all. Thank you. So, just as Marisa said, which is super strong and super personal, is uh, something that I believe in is we have a lot of resources that we just don't know how to utilize, like our great teachers, like Miss Woodson right over there, who makes sure I get to school on time and makes sure I do my work and everything that I need to do. She helps me, but um, I know limits through the school district. Uh, teachers aren't really allowed to give their opinions on things. Um, you're not allowed to discuss politics or religion, or they're not allowed to say how they feel, and I think that's something that could heavily change because I'd say maybe not 50% of my educational life in school uh, I learned more emotional ways of handling things. Of course, school, the focus of it is knowledge, but a lot of us uh, have a lot of emotion that goes through it all. So kids, it, you will stress, you will be overwhelmed, uh, and we're not taught how to handle any of that. We, uh, it, we're kind of designed to do a certain thing, like other groups have said, you know, you go to school, uh, some kids don't even learn, they just get their diploma. That's it. You go to school just to get your diploma because that's what's required. And then you leave and you didn't know how to handle anything on the way. <laughs> so you made it to the end, but you acquired nothing along the journey. Wow, things could be so much better than they actually are 
with if we had an extra 40 minutes of our lunch, if, uh, if the library was open to go study in, if we were able to talk to our teachers, uh, which is something I don't exactly understand, legal terms of why a teacher can't express their own opinion to students because like I look up to a lot of my teachers, individuals, they've motivated me, they've helped me, the way that I look at life and how I motivate myself. And uh, that's not allowed. Really, really just blows my mind. Um, bullying, of that will always be a thing, and somebody living to a standard is what I feel like bullying is. Uh, you only let somebody bully you if you want to be something through their eyes. I don't care if I look stupid to somebody. I'll look stupid to a lot of people and not care. I really don't. Uh, it's something that I just don't allow to get to me, which I did at times. I was bullied, but I got over it. I had people who helped me. I had people who just made it worse. Uh, but it was something that I found with myself that I could get over. Uh, the lack of attention uh, to the cause or solution. So the cause of things, uh, especially the way it's formed through certain individuals, a certain amount of stress from a certain person or overwhelming could be the fact that you're taking five AP classes or something similar or simpler of you just need one good grade or pass a single test and solutions can be given to all of those things as I was saying you could open up have students come into classrooms during lunch give them time to study give them extra materials to read advise them advise them that's what we look to all of you people for, advice. And you have more experience than us, and you can guide us. And uh, a lot of our teachers aren't exactly allowed to do that fully or give their 100% thought base into it. They just do what's required for their paycheck. Some teachers don't exactly care about their students. And uh, Ms. Woodson, you definitely do, that's for sure. You'll, you'll cry over there if we do, that's for sure, and I love that. And that's such a helpful thing that motivated me to be here, to speak in front of everybody, and to have something that I actually stand for. Um, but a lot of people allow the problem to develop. A lot of people just tell you to brush something off your shoulder, or do it your own, which you are supposed to do things on your own. If you have a bad grade, you're supposed to go home and you're supposed to fix it. But we have a lot of other things that add into the help for these students. So give students extra time. It doesn't have to be time that you just make up because we're all on the same time. We don't have 24 hours in a day. People don't just get extra time. I don't just have 25 hours in a day. But the way I utilize it, and advisors that help me, and they teach me how to utilize it, that stuff is so important because I could waste a full day of doing absolutely nothing. And I could let my problems get worse. Uh, but there are people who are smarter than me, they know a little more, and they can advise me to do proper things, and it'll make me happier, it'll solve my issues. And if I'm happier, I'll be happier with myself. I won't let bullying get to me. The lack of attention or fitting in, I want to be myself. And I think that is the basics of this, of what I want. I want people to be happy and know that they can be happy. That's the importance of life. Thank you. So these are the statistics on mental health. This is a chart that shows for the rate of 100,000 students. The California rate of suicide rates. So the rate is 7.9 out of every 100,000 students. And for our county alone, it's 7.4, just a little below average. But as you see here, it was trending a lot in these past years. So in the, I want to say 20 years, it's gone up, it's peaked again, it's come down. But we always, as a whole, we want to keep it down, we want to keep going down, we want to keep giving people the resources that they need and the coping skills that they need. Um, as well, I relate to them, I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety. Uh, I didn't know throughout my whole childhood what it was, why I had this aching feeling in my chest, why I always felt guilty all the time. Even then, like I had family that supported me, I had teachers to look up to, I had teachers to be close with, but I still felt guilty all the time. And I didn't know why. And I didn't know what it was, and I didn't know what to do until I talked to a teacher who I was close with and who 
gave me the resources, who helped me go talk to a counselor, who got me into therapy. And using those resources, like, helped me a lot. I always think everything happens for a reason. And for me to have to go through that and appreciate life now way more than I did back then when I wanted to kill myself at one point, it's helped. And I just want every kid who has ever felt the way that I have or who, who was feeling right now that they want to kill themselves, I want them to know that in the end, it's worth it. If life is worth it. You have so many opportunities to go through, but not everyone knows what they are. So in raising awareness, we can help people and we can give them the coping skills that they need. So this is just a survey that we took within all the students that were here. These are, this is a statistics for people that have, helped, that have felt depressed. Um, as you can tell that some of them that believe they have and not been professionally diagnosed and then some said yes. This overtakes how many students say no that they have never felt depressed. The people who suffer from a mental illness, many people said no. This, like, this does not take over half of it, but a lot of them have said yes, I felt depressed, yes, I feel anxious all the time. And then from school being stressful, no one, no one said that it wasn't. They said sometimes, yes, or most of the time. No one had ever said rarely school is never ever stressful. No school is never stressful. So I feel like schools, as a school, as schools in total, we just need to evaluate what could be giving kids anxiety, what could be making kids depressed, and what are the things that school has to impact on students and how we feel. So now I'm going to who and what can make the difference. Counselors are a big one. My counselor, I love my counselor so much. Like, Miss Green is amazing. She's the reason why I got to do my SAT today and why I'm able to be here. So, I, I love my counselor so much. Um, teachers and mentors. I definitely have a teacher that um, has helped me through a lot. And we need more people like her at our school because a lot of teachers really don't care about their students. They're there to get their paycheck and that's it. Also, students and peers, students, they trust other students because we relate to what our peers are going through. We know that they're our same age and they can understand more about what we're physically going through. Peers, I'm a part of peers. It's an amazing program that has helped me open up to myself and has let me discover my own emotions. The friends have definitely also helped me a lot. They help a lot of people out. Maybe your friend is thinking about suicide and you help that friend out. You just saved their life. You saved a beating heart. If that doesn't make a difference, I don't know what does. Parents, a lot of people have their parents that are there for them. A lot of people don't. Some people have that luxury and others don't because their parents are working or their parents are split. So if you have your parents together or you at least have one parent that you know you can talk to, you, you're lucky than, you're more lucky than half the population. Community members and social media especially, everyone uses social media nowadays. And there's so many negative things on social media, but if you can create a positive platform, it can go miles and help so many people. And you guys, the board, you guys can help us change this thing that makes everyone <coughs> up here feel some type of way that we've never been helped or we have been helped, we've gotten someone to reach out to us or we have it. You guys can start the change of being able to make people not feel this way, to not be brought to tears by just talking about how you feel, to not be able to get to that point. We want to stop you from being able to get to this point before you're actually there. What can make the difference? What we thought as a whole was a homeroom period. 30 minutes to an hour of our day, right? A homeroom period, it's a stress-free period. We could have some tutors in there. I know Apple Valley High School, we have tutors for Avid especially that stay also after school in the library. We can have a homeroom period with tutors that help you that are struggling and help you just de-stress yourself during that period and not be worried about, I have to memorize these 20 flashcards or else I won't pass this test and I won't get that A and my GPA will plummet. Also, being informed. 
I went through a, um, a peer camp where they helped me listen to people and help me just talk to people in general, how to be there for others. And if teachers were more informed like that, so many people would be helped. Because I know myself, I've heard some people out and they've told me that I've helped them, which touches my heart dearly. That's the specific training. Also suicide prevention training. As peers, I also went through that, which makes you see such a different side of things because there's someone that's probably suffering from wanting to kill themselves right in front of you and you don't see it. And you see these signs and you're like, whoa, I think I should ask them the question if they're thinking about killing themselves. And showing you care and being genuine about it. Some teachers, you hear teachers all the time saying, well, if you ever need something, go to an adult. We're there to listen to you. Go trust an adult. But even our own group leader said that when certain students tell her stuff, she has to go report it. Even if it's something that it's not as big of a deal as killing themselves, they have to because it's their job to report it. So how are you supposed to trust a teacher if they have to tell everything that you tell to them to someone in higher power? How is that confidential? How is that you trusting them when they're breaking your trust by going to speak to someone else? And then therapy. Therapy has helped a lot of people that I know that are in my personal life and as friends. It's helped a lot of people. I know many people don't believe in it, but I strongly do. So therapy is also one of the things that our school has. They have a, um, a therapist on campus if students do need it. But again, it's not enough for the 3,000 plus students we have. And more counselors in general, more good counselors. Not just more counselors, more good counselors that care about their students, that want to hear them out. I told my counselor that I want to be 20 different things since I was a freshman. And to this day, I'm still confused. And I'm a junior going into my senior year. So we need counselors that care, teachers that care, people like you who care. That's what we need. sum everything up, uh, what, can, what can we do to help? Uh, one thing that we've talked about a lot was having consistent mental health awareness. What we were thinking was requiring teachers to go to special training for mental health so they can know um, how to help the students and not just guessing what they do or what um, ideas for them to help. A second thing was uh, having a homeroom. Um, going to, like, during lunch or after school, even having 30 minutes where you don't have to worry about your grades, you don't have to worry about what is going on at home, even just those 30 minutes where you could speak to other students about it, I think that would be very helpful. Um, and the last thing that we were talking about was a club. Um, an after school organization that could be done uh, so students could talk with other students with similar or different problems so we get that connection in our schools and in our society and community and so we don't feel alone in our problems. And I feel like that would help a, a lot uh, to ourselves and other people. We could even be helping other people with their problems just by listening to them and that could be very helpful. Thank you. Now if you guys have any questions, we would love to answer them. This is, we come up here and speaking, and I think all you said, if not, if you didn't say all you with the anxiety, to come up here to do this, I mean, I, I, was, I, was, uh, I wish I had tissues out here before you guys started talking here, Be because this is that emotional environment that's saying, well, you need to learn, but you got to learn like everybody else, it's like, no, I, we need to do something. Can, can I ask again, which ones were from Shadow Ridge. I know you were, you are, and you are. And I don't want to take away from, from the other schools, but uh, I mean, you guys have been in the limelight over the, with the board over the last, I'm going to say years, but you know, we just had discussion about it again because we're, we're trying to constantly figure out how, what uh, that, that school is doing for students that have that. I mean, it's, um, and I, and I don't want to get into a lot of specifics, but we're trying to figure out saying, we, we do understand that there is a, a, a segment of our educational population that has this. My daughter went through the same thing at Oak Hills. 
And it would have been better for her, for example, to be maybe taking some classes there or taking things away from there or, or trying to figure out how to solve this. Um, I, I don't want to get into all the weeds on this, but uh, I, I think it is important that uh, what you guys presented here, this is a huge topic. Um, this is something that is, is, is so easily can get in the way of you being able to be effective, your education being effective, your, getting your depth of knowledge that you want to, to acquire. Um, like I said, your, your testimonies up here were huge today. And it's, it's not something that, I, I, and I even said this, I don't know if any of you saw at the board meeting or if you guys made it at the board meeting, I, I kind of relate to you guys sometimes, Shadow Ridge is like a Petri dish. It's an experiment that's constantly, constantly being looking and saying, what do we need to do next to figure out how to, to make an, a, have an environment that you can feel comfortable to gain the knowledge so that as you gain more knowledge, hopefully you'll be able to get over these things and be able to get to that next level. So I, I don't know what else to say here, but uh, thank you, I mean, for bringing this topic forward because we do recognize that it's big. Have we solved it? No, we're a long way from solving. I, I know in our district, I know the other districts, are, I'm sure the same thing. Uh, um, we do recognize it. Will we fix it in the next five minutes, in the next year here? You all be graduated, but out of the way, and we're going to still be working on this. So anyway, I don't really know if I even have a question for you guys. I just want to thank you for, for coming forward. With, the problem was, is, is what you guys did here, bringing your own anxieties and speaking in front of us, that was just monstrously huge. So thank you very much for that. And I just want to thank you all because stigma, which this Isaiah talked about, right, is a mark of disgrace that we put upon a particular group. And that's huge with mental health. And so when, when kids speak up about it, that's amazing. So you um, help to destigmatize mental illness um, just to the folks in this room. And we have to keep doing it over and over and over again. There are so many opportunities. And so just, again, you sharing your story. but. We work the County Department of Behavioral Health. We get prevention and early intervention dollars that we put. We work with the superintendent of schools to get programs in your schools that address this sort of thing. But we probably need to maybe tweak that and, and look at how effectively we're delivering it and which schools we're delivering it to. Really focus on the peer um, angle that you guys talked about. Are you all aware of, have you participated in Mental Health First Aid? So mental health first aid is legislation, I know some of us in this room have been talking about it, where we would do just this. It's an eight-hour training, depending um, on what group of folks you're doing it to, but it trains non-clinicians how to identify issues of mental illness and then make the, pro the appropriate referral so that we don't have to rely on teachers to become your social worker or your clinician as well, because they're, they're educators. They do a little bit of that, but this gives a little bit more training. But aside from that, so the legislation is going right now. My county uh, behavioral health directors association is pushing it forward, is in support of it. The superintendent of schools is also in support of it and is carrying it. So we we have some things in the works, but um, mental health first aid. There's a there's a peer one. There's one for youth where you just get trained, and I'd be happy to share that information with whoever I have to here because we do the training and we we could train youth so that you can then be this kind of group at the bottom. You know the peer folks who can address these issues. But um, again, you guys did a, a great um, a great presentation, and to, to let yourself be vulnerable and then pull it back together. Lots of grown-ups cannot. Once they get a little shaky, you can't pull their stuff back together, so you guys really did. I'm really impressed, but I'll get the information now so you guys can have access to some other uh, tools. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you all. Um, I encourage you to, to keep keep talking, keep asking those questions to kids. You know, who, who maybe don't uh, aren't afflicted by depression or anxiety. Find out if they are. I run a nonprofit that we help pay for funerals. Last year, I paid 12 people suicides uh, funerals. 11 of those were minors under the age of 18. I don't want to take care of any more of those. I don't want us to have any more of those. And you guys are perpetuating the solution. So keep going. Start those clubs. Take advantage of those trainings because that's exactly what we need. We need to continue to stop the problem before it, before it gets to the point where you can't do anything anymore. So thank you. Thank you. Any last comment? 
I, I do. I, I, you know, you guys represented, and I want to say this to all of you guys that spoke today. You know, each time you spoke, I just wanted to clap after you guys were done. I want you to know. I mean, I, we would be here all day. I know that, but every time you spoke today, yeah. I just wanted to cheer and go. That's just fabulous because I think the thing that's so exciting about what you just said today, and, and how can I get to this? I, I don't know, but the message of hope. Um, you guys have learned some coping mechanisms, and we talk about some potential tools to put in our tool bags and things like that. You guys could be so dynamite about that because you're going to grow up even more than you are already are, and you're going to be able to tell your story, and you're going to give a measure of hope to other people that they can also be successful like you've done. And the fact that you were able to come back and, and share your emotions, all of us were sitting here weeping with you, and we could do that together, but then bring us all back in and say, but here's the next step, and here's the next steps, and I think that's fantastic. So share your message. Make sure that the message of hope gets out amongst your peers, because like you said specifically, peers, you know, that just jumps out. You guys are probably the most impactful people that, of anybody in the room to one another, because you guys know what you each other are going through, okay? Because you're in that moment. So anyway, thank you. Thank, thank you for doing it.